Hey everyone, it's Jonathan here, founder of Driving Academy, and you're watching this video because you want to get the most out of your CDO license. Because you've heard of this thing called endorsements, but you don't really know how you're going to get it. So if you watch this video all the way to the end, we're going to show you exactly how to make the most of your CDO license and get all the endorsements that are important to you and depending on what you want to do with this license. All right, so let's talk about the first endorsement. That's going to be one of the easier ones to get, which is going to be a tanker endorsement. Now you're going to want to get this endorsement if you want to drive vehicles that look like this. That means you're going to be driving tanks and these tanks can be carrying li liquids or sometimes they can be carrying grain or maybe some dry product as well. Anything that actually carries the tank and that's more than 500 gallons, you're going to need a tanker endorsement. So that being said, how do you get one? You're going to have to study the tanker section of the CDL manual and then all you have to do when you're getting your CDL permit, just pass that extra tanker written test uh, on, on the DMV itself. Once you actually pass the tanker DMV written test, then they're going to add it to your permit and there's nothing extra you have to do on the actual road test because once you go for the road test, it's going to be on a normal truck. You don't have to do anything in a tank and then you, once you actually get your CDL license, that endorsement will pop up on your actual CDL. The next endorsement on the list that we we're going to be talking about is going to be doubles and triples. So that is only going to be if you want to get a CDL Class A, where if you're getting your tanker, you can actually get a tanker endorsement if you're going to go Class A or Class B. Now the reason why doubles and triples are only for the CDL Class A is because that means that you're going to be driving two or three trailers all at the same time. And a Class A is for a combination vehicle and you can see it's going to be a combination of different vehicles attached together. So when it comes to actually getting the doubles and triple endorsement, it's going to be the similar thing that you're going to have to do with your tanker, which means you're going to have to study the doubles and triples section and the combination section as well in your CDO manual. And then you're going to go to an actual DMV and take the doubles and triples test for that, right? We have another video online that actually shows you how to pass all the written tests and gives you all the tips and tricks there. So make sure you check that out on our channel here if you're not subscribed already. But now you might be thinking, well, when am I ever going to be driving two or three trailers around? So depending on the state that you're in depends on how popular it is. The more west you go out and the more desert areas where you have a lot more space, you'll see a lot more doubles and triples, especially in like Vegas, surprisingly. Vegas, you'll see a whole bunch of trailers uh, that are two and three trailers all attached together. That just means you're able to transport more stuff and go longer distance. Now, if you want to take it to the extreme, I want you to check out this truck right over here. It looks more like a train than a truck. And these trucks here are used in the quarries of Australia. And they have anywhere from seven to nine different trailers on this one truck. And all they do is drive through the desert from quarry to pick up whatever material they're going to and going it to wherever the end point is where they get to process all of that material itself. So when it comes to doubles and triples, it brings a whole nother level to it. But the cool thing is, all you gotta do is pass a written test. You don't have to worry about anything on the road test. And the fun fact is, it's a lot harder to back up double or triple trailers, and some people even say it's impossible. So now let's talk about the next one, which is going to be hazardous material endorsement, otherwise known as HAZMAT. Now this endorsement is going to be a little bit more complicated to actually get. So let's walk through the steps. Step number one, you're going to have to pass the HAZMAT ELDT training requirements. What does that mean? You can go online, search for HAZMAT ELDT. You're going to have to take a course there, make sure you pass that test with at least 80% or better. And then once you do that, you actually have access to go and take the written test at the DMV itself, right? So now, but in order to get ready for that DMV test, make sure you're studying that CDL manual and look at the hazardous material endorsements uh, section on the CDL manual to walk you through that whole process there. Now, once you actually pass the written test itself, it's not over. Because you are transporting hazardous material, you are going to have to go through a background check with TSA to make sure that you are safe and able to rock and roll. Uh, so if you do have some type of shady background, hazmat might not be the best option for you. Now the pros of driving hazmat is most of the time it is going to be a higher pay. So as an example, you, now we're getting to the point where we can kind of combine endorsements. So if you want to transport these oil tankers here driving gasoline to gas stations, you're going to need a tanker endorsement and a hazardous material endorsement, right? So now you're uh, combining both itself. You're doing a local job and you're getting paid a pretty nice amount of money because you have both of those endorsements. The more endorsements you actually have, the more valuable you become and the more and higher variety that you actually have to choose from when it comes to going from job to job. So it definitely does open you up. Now the other 
thing about hazmat is it's not one endorsement that you have to just take once and that's it. On this case, you're going to have to redo it every two to four years depending on the state that you're in. And every time you renew your license, your hazmat has its own expiration date, which means you have to keep getting fingerprints done, keep taking the written test itself. So you make sure that you're up to date on the most uh, safe to use information and knowledge needed in order to transport hazardous material. So that's pretty much with hazmat. It does get a little bit more complicated with hazmat, but if you go through it and your background is clean, then it might be a great way to start making some extra cash driving a tractor trailer. So out of those three endorsements already, which one do you think is actually the most valuable endorsement to have? And based on what you've learned, um, what's easier, what's harder, and maybe you have an endorsement, put it in the comments below. We'd love to hear it in the chat and maybe we'll help you out when it comes to even bringing your license to the next level. But let's get back to the video. All right, so that next endorsement that we're gonna be talking about is gonna be called a passenger endorsement. Now this mostly is gonna be used for people who have a CDL class B. However, you can have a class A license with a passenger endorsement as well, just like I do. That gives you the ability to drive tractor trailers just like this and now passenger buses as well. And that's pretty much what that endorsement is going to give you the access to drive, which is going to be able to drive passengers. Now, this does not mean you can drive school bus just with this endorsement alone. Wait till the end of the video and we'll show you exactly what you're going to need in order if you want to drive those yellow school buses to transport kids around. So when it comes to the actual passenger endorsement, here it gets a little bit even more hairier than the hazmat. So in this case, you're going to have to first pass the ELDT training course for passenger endorsement before you can go get your CDL permit passed. It's the same exact thing with hazmat. So if you want to come to our school, we can help you out with all of that stuff. We have passenger uh, courses available for CDL class B, and we even have courses that can get your CDL class A and with a passenger endorsement. Check out any of our locations, any location near you, we all offer the same exact thing which is definitely a cool thing. So we're gonna help you out with that whole ELDT section. Again, you're gonna have to go through a quick course, make sure you take the final test, get 80% or better on that. Once that's good, we're then gonna upload those results to the national database, and that's gonna give you access to go to your local DMV and take the actual written test for passenger endorsement. So once that's good, you have a passenger endorsement on your permit, but you're not done yet. At this point, now you have to take a road test in a passenger vehicle to solidify that you know exactly how to interact and how to make sure that you're inspecting the bus correctly, making sure that you know how to park the bus correctly, making sure you know how to interact with railroad crossings on the road driving portion of the test. And then once you pass the whole bus road test itself, now there's still one last part, which means you gotta get fingerprints done. Because you are transporting people, the most valuable cargo out there, uh, you are gonna make sure that you're not gonna, like your background is not gonna prevent you from actually getting a job. So passion endorsement also needs fingerprints to get done. And once you get the fingerprints done once and you get your license, you don't have to worry about it again. It's not like hazmat where you have to renew it every couple of years. So that is definitely a good thing to have with passenger endorsement. Now, if you have a class A and you want the ability to drive buses, you might be thinking, well, I don't have to take the road test again, do I? That is where you're wrong. If you want to get the passenger endorsement on your license, no matter if you have a class B, a class A, or any type of license, you have to go through a full road test again in a passenger vehicle. And if you come to our school here, we'll actually walk you through that entire process. We can do the training for you. We can set you up with our road test as well. Some of our locations have third-party testing sites available attached to them. Some of them go to the local DMVs near them. It all depends on what those states allow. But if you definitely want uh, more information, check out our website, cdldrivingacademy.com. All right, so now let's talk about school buses. Now, school buses specifically are buses that transport children. So let's be fully uh, clear on the definition. That means transporting kids to and from school and also transporting kids to any extracurricular activities, which means if you're tra tra transporting kids from a school to their soccer game or to their basketball game, you need a school bus endorsement. If you're transporting kids from a school to a field trip, you also need a school bus endorsement as well. Now, in order to get a school bus endorsement and drive school buses, you're going to need to have two endorsements the passenger and the school bus. So we already taught you how to get the passenger endorsement. The cool thing is if you get the school bus endorsement at the same time, it cuts out the whole step. So it's not like you gotta go through this whole thing at the, uh, twice. So when it comes to the school bus endorsement, same thing. You're gonna have to make sure you go to a school that offers the ELDT school bus endorsement. We do offer that for all of our locations as well. We can get you certified for that ELDT school bus. Again, go through the course, get 80% or better on that ELDT test, and then you can go and take the actual written test at the DMV. 
once you pass the written test at the DMV, now that school bus endorsement is on your license and now you're ready to rock and roll and get ready to pass that road test. Now the difference between a school bus road test and a passenger road test are a few things. So when it comes to the inspection, the school bus is required to have a few extra items on their inspection versus the passenger endorsement. And as an example, when it comes to bodily kit fluid, right? So first aid kit, bodily kit fluid, on the school bus you're gonna to need to have that in the vehicle. When it comes to just a passenger bus, you don't even have to worry about that at all in the vehicle, right? So those are some of the differences. When it comes to the parking portion of the road test, it's pretty much exactly the same, so you don't have to worry about that. But when it comes to the driving portion, you are gonna to have to know how to interact with railroad crossings, but you're also gonna to have to show the examiner that you know how to pick up and drop off kids in a proper, safe manner, according to the CDO manual. So that's why it gets a little bit more difficult with that. But the cool thing is, if you take the road test, make sure you, it is in a school bus certified vehicle, and that means that you can get both at the same time. Passenger, since uh, kids are passengers, but now it's also going to be a school bus, which means you have to know how to interact with the four-way, uh, with the eight-way lights when you're picking up and dropping off kids, and all that extra stuff when it comes to school bus. So again, if you want to go for school bus specifically, we definitely recommend coming on in to drive an academy, and we can walk you through that entire process. Whether you want to drive coach buses or school buses, getting that endorsement is definitely a good thing. Now, the one thing that you do have to understand about school buses, it is different state by state. And what is different is the fingerprint process. So you are gonna have to get your separate set of fingerprints for the school bus as well. So that means two sets of fingerprints, one for passenger endorsement, the other one's gonna be for school bus endorsement. And um, on most states, they'll only give you access to be a school bus driver if you're attached to a school bus company, which means you can't just go be a freelance school bus driver right off the bat simply because there's such a shortage of actual uh, school bus drivers, they want to attach them to companies and then they can actually keep the whole ball rolling. Now this doesn't mean if the company that you want to work for doesn't work out, you can't move to somebody else. That's very easy that you can do, but you actually, in order to get that on your actual license, it must be a school bus company itself. So that's pretty much all the main endorsements that you have to worry about when it comes to improving your CDL license and filling it up to the max. So when it comes to my endorsements, I have doubles and triples, I have tankers, and I have passenger. I don't have school bus because I don't work for a school bus company, and I also don't have hazmat because I don't drive hazardous material around. I do know the information, and I also don't want the headache of constantly renewing something every single time and not having to worry about it. So if you're somebody like me and you kind of want to cover your bases, those would be a great way to start off. And then all of a sudden, if somebody, maybe a hazmat job opens up that you really like, all you gotta do is go take a written test and you're good to go. All of a sudden, if a school bus job opens up that you really like, then you can always add that later. The cool thing about these endorsements is whatever you have now can always be changed or upgraded in the future. So if you have no CDL license, we can help you out. If you already have a CDL license and you wanna upgrade it, we can also help you out as well. And that's what we're here for. Here at Driving Academy, our mission is to help a million people get on the road to freedom. And we know that freedom looks different for everybody. Some people want this type of job, some people want that type of job. The cool things about our school is we're open up seven days a week, which means if, even if you're working full-time, you can come to school on a part-time basis. Most of our students do. All you need is $500 down to get yourself started in any of the courses that we do have. And we also do offer lifetime job placement. And we have a whole bunch of other perks as well when you become a student. But I definitely invite you to check out our website, cdldrivenacademy.com. Again, cdldrivenacademy.com. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button. Also, subscribe to our channel. It's really going to help us out. Click on that button. And if you want to continue yourself on your road to freedom, here's more videos to watch. There's endless amounts. Hopefully we get to see each other one day very soon. Thanks.